Atlantic Square is now solved. Today, a judge sentenced the man responsible to life without parole. It's more time than the prosecution requested. The murder happened in 2020, and it was all over a parking spot. New at 6, Channel 2 investigative reporter Mark Winnie is live inside the Fulton County Courthouse. And Mark, the judge called this an execution. Yeah, a prosecutor here at the Fulton County District Attorney's Office says he used a big diagram of the Lenox Square parking lot along with mall surveillance video and much more to explain to the jury what happened. He says the incident ended in the parking lot with a murder, but it started there too with what should have been a minor dispute over a parking spot. On the count of murder, um, I'm going to sentence you to life without the possibility of parole. This case um, is particularly disturbing. Um, it was described by witnesses to the murder as an execution. It was pure evil. With a gun pointed to the back of that victim's head when you pulled the trigger and killed a man, leaving his family and his child with no father. The law, a Lenox Square parking lot, and a life lost. On March 8, 2020, um, defendant Ricky Lafarge shot and killed Tuan Nguyen in the back of the head in the parking lot of Lenox Mall, uh, all over a dispute uh, over a parking spot. Chief Senior Assistant Fulton County DA John Whitenauer says he recommended life, but because of his age at the time of the murder, 19, and his lack of an adult criminal record, with the possibility of parole, plus five years, for Ricky Lafarge. But Judge Alice Benton exceeded that, ordering life without parole, plus five. Someone lost their life over a parking space. Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis. Your reaction to the sentence? Um, I'm pleased with it. I understand why the judge gave the sentence she gave. We're told Danielle Russell tried the case with Whitenauer. The judge did the right thing in this case. Whitenauer says an SUV carrying Lafarge and four others zipped into a parking space when and his girlfriend had been waiting on to open up. Wynn and Lafarge's group exchanged words from a distance. Lafarge is wearing the KC hat. Lafarge's group went to the mall food court. Prosecutors believe Wynn, unarmed and outnumbered, must have seen them leaving and followed them out. During the confrontation, Lafarge, who had a gun in a sling bag, circled behind Wynn and moments later shot him. Lafarge's group fled in an SUV but quickly crashed, and Lafarge ran off but left a gun and a hat with his DNA behind. Defense lawyer Patrick Brackley. Defense was Mr. Lafarge took out the weapon, attempted to strike the uh, victim, and the gun accidentally went off. A defense which the jury evidently rejected, uh, but that I believe will hold water on appeal. There's no evidence that, that Mr. Wynn ever threw any punches at Mr. Lafarge. It was senseless. There were multiple people around. Um, it was in broad daylight. I know that we have people that are saying, well, they won't go to popular spots in Atlanta. I'm not willing to give up any of Atlanta to include Lenox Mall. We think that Lenox has taken great steps since this, but I plan to continue to shop there. I want my constituents to continue to shop there, um, and I'm going to work with law enforcement to make sure we keep that a safe environment. And now Whitenauer says on the witness stand, by the way, I understand that uh, the names in purple are witness names. Uh, he says on the witness stand, Lafarge claimed that Wynn initiated a uh, fist fight with a member of Lafarge's party. And that man who pled guilty under the First Offender Act to making false statements to the police also made that claim on the stand. But none of the state's independent witnesses backed that up. We used video and photos obtained through the prosecution in our report. Reporting live. Mark Winnick, Channel 2 Action News. Good morning. Welcome back to Who Want a Life Sentence. Court is now in session. Everybody come in and take a seat. Uh, please hit the like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. I read them all. Uh, shout out to my jurors, man. I'm, I'm the judge. So my jurors going to be my moderators. Uh, so shout out to my jurors. I got uh, Can't Get Right, DJ uh ganja nicole and i think that's it right now uh can't get right dj ganja nicole feel like i'm missing somebody but anyway shout out to the jurors man we finna get this thing started uh y'all know how it go man i feel like i got something to say I, I got something to say about this one today we have ricky with my glasses hold on okay 
Today we have Ricky James Lafarge. Ricky James Lafarge. And I don't want to hear nothing at you, uh, Ganja. Leave me alone with my glasses. Let me handle this now. Let me handle this. Uh, today we got Ricky James. We're going to break a couple of things down today. First and of all, the we need to emphasize the fact that this young man has completely thrown his entire life away for absolutely no reason. This might be I've seen a lot of done I've seen a lot of dumb things done in my life. I have done some terrible terribly dumb things in my life. Uh, as a matter of fact, the crime that I went and did 10 years for, I, I count that as one of my biggest mistakes because we ain't get nothing. I ain't get nothing. I got 10 years. I did 10 years for an attempted robbery. Now, we actually robbed the man, but he ain't had no money. So it was an attempted robbery. I, I For years, man, I, I just did not know how I would live up to that shame i was embarrassed to talk about my case to anybody um i didn't want to face the facts of reality that i really didn't know what i was doing because when i talked to other guys about their case they would say yeah man um i got caught for robbing of uh, of uh, restaurants but i had robbed 19 of them before i got caught that's how they caught on to me or yeah, man, I, I robbed a jewelry store and I got 113000 and then they caught me uh, such and such a hero there. Whatever the case is, 40000 20000 I would hear these stories and feel like, man, I did a whole robbery and didn't get nothing. I got a wallet that had credit cards in there. No cash, no money, can't use credit cards because I ain't have no ID at 14 years old. So I was walking around feeling like a real knucklehead, a real dummy, refused to talk to people about my case just because I actually had a guy laugh at me before. When I told him the, the details of my case and the stupid stuff that I'd done, he actually bust out laughing and said it. <laughs> like, <laughs> so y'all ain't getting that. And it was weird because I had never looked at it like that until I explained it to him and he regurgitated it back to me. Everything I just said in uh in the in, a, in a short terms. So y'all ain't get nothing. All right. We didn't get nothing. You're right. We didn't get nothing. Yeah, I dog. Oh, uh, hey, Baylor. So we didn't get nothing. You know what I mean? And and like I said, I, I wouldn't talk to nobody about that just out of pure embarrassment. My boy, I got to say, you have actually went lower than me. These folk done gave you life without parole for a parking space. A parking space that you can't put in your pocket, you can't spend, you can't eat, you can't pass down, you can't nurture, you can't cuss at, you can't fuck. We talking about a parking space, man. Bad as it is, as bad as it is to, thank you. As bad as it is to harm someone or attempt to harm someone over another human being, over a little piece of, you know what I mean, a little piece of booty. I could understand. I could actually understand. You lost your mind, you're tender, all this and all that. How you going to explain a parking space? Actually, this goes into the point I used to make about the emotional man. Um, because only an emotional man would get so upset in that moment that he decides that something has to be done. We spend half of our life in traffic. Anything you got to do, anywhere you got to go, you got to leave to go there. So to not know how to handle traffic disputes or to not know how to handle just going out and behaving in public, man, this is a, 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 a this is a complete failure. 
if you ask, like I said, when when you are around, when you are a raised around men, when young boys are raised around men, then you get to witness how you're supposed to allow things to roll off your back. You're supposed to be able to take an insult and keep going. You know, fathers will instill rules in you like as long as he don't put his hands on you. Uh, talk is cheap. Uh, 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 sticks and stones may break my bones. You know, words will never hurt me. This type of thing, you can tell. But only in most of the time, you know, most of the time females get emotional and they hold a level of now understand this. I'm not um I'm not I'm not downing or shaming any of my females. I'm not pro male or anything like that. I, I my whole house is females. I would I I would choose females over males. I would let me say that right there. But um the females when they can't control that emotion, sometimes it be so balled up and and something has to happen when you when you so hurt that there has to be a vengeance. I have to make you feel the way that I feel right now. I have to make you feel the pain that you have put me through. Because even in this case, you know, it was the guys had the, the incident was done. The man took your parking space. Y'all get out, have words, whatever. They went into the mall whatever food court whatever was going on and then come back out of the mall and there's still a problem you see there should be nothing that sit on you uh there should be nothing that sit on you that bad uh, and and the fact of the matter is if you are a person that something that small will sit on your back and choke you until you respond to it then i hate to say it but maybe you are where you know where maybe prison is where you you belong that's just not normal life without parole i wish i had something let me if i can look up the definition of time let me see if i can let me see if i can how i can put this together The definition of time, the indefinite continued progress of existence and events in the past, present, and future regarded as a whole. It says the indefinite continued progress of existence, the indefinite continued progress of existence. I'm trying to break this down for you to understand something. It says the indefinite continued progress. Let me write that down. Indefinite continued progress of existence. And I have to write it down so that I can take it and analyze it, count a two on it, to, to fully get into it and break it down to for what I need. It's a indefinite, which is mean like endless, you know, um, non-stopping, everlasting. Continued means to move on, progress. So uh, non-stopping of moving on, you know, continue to continue to go. Con indefinite continued progress of existence now when you say exists you just meaning just just the 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 form of being here you don't have to really do anything to exist you just have to be if they have taken you out of existence they have i mean you you're still in existence because you're inside a prison somewhere but to the natural world 
you have been taken out of existence. I want to read the the definition of abyss. Uh, this is actually one of those little side definitions. But the abyss is a deep, immeasurable space that seems to be without end or is impossible to measure, define, or comprehend. It says it's impossible to measure, define, or comprehend, meaning there's no way to put a name. Well, you can put a name on it. There's no way to put, there's no way to set parameters around it. Um, if you've ever, I'm, let, let's go, let's go deep real quick. Um, sometimes a lot of, most times I stay away from and, uh, conversations of these sorts, because once you start to realize of your own mortality, it can actually get kind of depressing. When you realize how small you are in such an infinite world, like I said, it's depressing because to know that once you're gone and once everything gone, there's almost there will almost be no record of you. Because if there's no record of the people that have record of you, then there's no record of you. You don't know your your I'm hope I'm I'm guessing anyway. Uh you don't know your grandparents of 75 generations ago. You might know your your grandparents of four generations ago, three generations ago, last generation, but you don't know your grandparents from 70 generations ago. Safe to say they've been forgotten. So, my friend, you have put they have successfully stopped your progress in time what i'm trying to get to get you to understand is they have essentially threw you into an abyss an abyss it's a very 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 that's a that's a scary word it's like a a black hole the reason why it's so scary because we don't know much about it the one thing we know about it is it's never ending there can never be a return. This one is there's no return. Uh, there's 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 no recuperation. It's it's forever. Um, most times humans don't really acknowledge the word forever. We know what it means, but we don't really acknowledge the word forever because most things in our life are not forever. Not your relationships, not your good times, not your bad times. So forever never really applies to the human situation even if you have a if you have a terminal disease you won't have AIDS forever you'll just have it until you die but these you have allowed these people to put you in a a form of forever that is not a good term do you understand that they've essentially played god with you because as we know, right, ain't God the only one that can send you to heaven or hell, which is eternity on both ways? So you have allowed these people to play God and essentially sentence you to eternity. Inside an abyss. It's an abyss because if I never do anything, I'll never see that place. It, they could put you in a black hole and it would be the same. Because knock on the wood because I'm never going and you're never coming out. So there's, there's, there can be no, there's, there's no form of it's forever. It's done. It's done again. Sometimes I think about this and, and it gets real depressing when I think about like the stuff that we don't know. We don't know if after we're gone, we'll keep our same conscience so that there's some semblance of of comfort, like, man, it's going to be OK. Don't worry. You know, it gets greater later. We don't have any of that. We don't we, we just don't know. And that thought is so scary. Like I said, I don't know if if my grandmother is if they just cease to exist, if they'll ever come back again, if we'll ever see them again. We like to think that we see people again. But the fact of the matter is we don't know. Which leaves a possibility that we may not. So, again, 
this is a very, 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 I was about to say tragic, which would be dumb. This is a very, very stupid situation. Very stupid. Um, I, I think young men, they need their fathers in their lives to understand, man, to, to not be so angry, to, to not be so quick to get angry. Like I said before, guys, your anger should be very, very expensive. It should be very expensive. Everybody should not be able to afford it. When someone driving down the road and, then not this is what I always this is what I tell myself because I don't go to work every day. Nothing against it. I might go to work every day in the future. That'd be different. But as of right now, I don't go to work every day. But sometimes I'm out there in the morning when people are going to work. So like I'll go gas up the vehicles that are needed for the day. While I'm driving 20, 30 miles per hour, because I'm only going to the gas station and coming back home. People are flying to work. Some of them are late. Some of them are on time, trying not to be late. They flying. They 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 behind me. They ride your butt. They some of them jump jump in front of you in that middle lane, then then cut you off. And first thought is always, man, let me go get back in front of him and cut him off. Let me make him feel like he just made me feel. But it's the second thought. The second thought. This is what I tell you guys. There's nothing wrong with. With being a bitch ass dude, you just got to know how to correct it. You got to know when you being a bitch ass dude. So you got to correct it. My second thought is, man, I'm folk late for work. They they rushing to work. I'm finna go home and roll up. I let them go. You know what I mean? And then you'll notice that once you let them go and they keep hauling ass, they not even thinking about you at all. So you taking it personal, but it wasn't personal. They thinking about their job. You just something else in their way. So, hey, listen, guys, I appreciate you guys for tapping in with me. For all my new subscribers, thank you guys for being here. Uh, we're not going to go live tonight. I'll save that for tomorrow. But I really appreciate you guys. Please hit the like, share, subscribe. Um, and we'll see y'all on the next one. On the next one, I'm, I, I I know who I got. I ain't going to tell y'all. I know who I got coming up, but I'm finna prepare it right now. So for this one, we got uh, my boy. We got Ricky James LaFarge, you know, and though I'm not, and it said for the county, so this boy right here in my hometown, and though I'm not happy for any of the craziness that anyone do, what I can appreciate is the fact that you're willing to go and get these lessons and and give them back to us without us having actually having to go through them so we know we won't be shooting nobody for no parking spots or, or, or for anything at that matter but especially not for something as simple as a parking spot the judge uh one thing about this case is the judge uh the da recommended life plus five years, which means after he served a term, he can be considered for parole. He may not get it, but he could be considered for parole. And at some point, he'd come home after 25 years, 30 years, whatever. Now, I think that's pretty, even though that's pretty, that's pretty harsh, I think it's, I think it could work. I think it could work. The judge decided against that. You, you decided to alter someone's life forever. That man had kids. You've taken someone father. You've taken someone son. You've taken, you've taken a lot from a lot of people for absolutely no reason. Because it is not against the law to be rude. It is not against the law to be an asshole. I can take your parking spot. I can, I can, I can, I can drive slow in traffic. It is not against the law. And you do not have the right to take someone's life for it. So the judge seemed fit to go uh, further than the recommendation, and she gave life without parole. And then after you finish your life without parole, after you never come home, you get another five years, my boy. How you like them apples? I appreciate you guys for, uh, for joining in with me. I thank y'all, and I'll see y'all later. And keep tuning, keep keep that uh, notification bell on because I might just pop and go live and see what y'all doing. All right? Life without parole.